Hey you guys, today we are making dinner from the stockpile and it's a little bit more involved, but I think you're really gonna like it, so let's get started. Hey you guys, welcome back to Heartway Farms. We are doing another cooking from your stockpile video, but before we get started, I wanna just tell you guys about the things that we offer in heartwayfarms.com. Head over to the website, you'll see we have new things on there. Marie has made some beautiful hand poured candles. We have homemade soap, gold lotion, all the things. And so on. Elderberry, all the good things. Please head over there and check it out and see what we have, all the stuff that we love, we want you guys to have available to you. So go check it out. Okay, you have been loving the cooking from your stockpile of videos. And today we are for real, like it's it's almost time to start dinner and we're starting dinner, yes. right? Today we're gonna make a little bit of a fancier, it's like a simple but fancy version of one of our go-to stockpile dinners. We love, most of us, except for one kid, so I'm just keep, keeping it real, all of us love tuna salad sandwiches. And usually we make that, our delicious crusty bread loaf. You guys have seen that in videos and we have a how-to video on that, but we're not talking about that today. But go check out that video. We make a couple loaves of that homemade crusty bread and we slice it up and we do open face sandwiches with, with tuna. Because just like, I'm sure all of you who are watching, I can almost guarantee if you have a stockpile that you probably have tuna in your stockpile. And tuna by itself can be a little boring. It can be a little, uh, I don't know, a little boring and unappealing. So we like to do kind of a fun version of tuna. And today, what, what's making it really fun, you can totally make it on crusty bread. You can make it on whatever you guys have stocked up in your house. But today we're making it on croissants homemade butter croissants and they are so good so we're taking a stockpile meal and making it fancy it's okay to be fancy and enjoy it you know even if you're cooking from your pantry so I'm not having to go to the store for any of these things everything you're gonna see today we have stocked up in the root cellar including all the butter croissant stuff yeah. so anyway if you have tuna and you have some of your basic ingredients you guys can make this meal too so let's get started step one is what Jules so the first thing we are going to do is I have heated up my milk and this is one and a half cups of milk and I'm going to put half of that into my mixer and this has been warmed up to roughly 100 degrees roughly 100 degrees it doesn't have to be exact and then I'm going to put in my six tablespoons of regular plain sugar this is organic cane sugar I'm gonna let that mix mix in a little bit and then I have a tablespoon and a half of active dry yeast. And I'm just going to add that to my sugar and milk. But it is important that your milk's not too hot. Yes. Because what, what will it do? It will kill off the yeast. But as long as it's not over 115 degrees Fahrenheit, it will not kill the yeast, unless something really crazy happens. All right, and you're just activating the yeast right now? Yes. Making sure it's all in the milk. And then I'm just gonna shut this off and let it sit for two to five minutes just to let it bloom. So our yeast has been sitting for around two minutes and you can see it's starting to get nice and frothy. And then the next thing we need to do is add our four cups of flour. And this is just regular all-purpose flour. I'm gonna try to do it without spilling it. And remind me, Jules, how many this recipe uh, makes estimation uh, the last time I made it, it made 20 croissants. And they're, they were a good size. They were pretty decent yeah. croissants, so. And I, butter croissants seem a little, like, scary. Go ahead, what do you want to do? Two teaspoons of sea salt. And then the rest of my milk. And then I'm just going to mix this on low and let it all come together. I would say that, at least to me at first, like butter croissants seemed a little intimidating, but as Jules figured out this recipe and tweaked it, it was like, okay, we can do this, and it will be a fun treat, 
and uh, a really cost-effective way to make them at home, I mean, I feel like you can make, I'd have to do the numbers, you can make a whole batch for like what it costs for like two croissants from a coffee shop or something. It's just crazy, Probably. it's so expensive. Um, so these are really good. And uh, like I said, while she's making the dough right now, the, uh, the initial dough, and there's yes. several steps, so this is kind of a harder process, but you can totally do this meal without butter croissants. You can do it with homemade bread, whatever homemade bread you guys love. You can do it with store-bought bread or whatever. And so I'm also gonna show you some um, homemade potato fries from our stockpile potatoes yes. later too. So we'll cover that when we get here, but that's it's gonna be a nice little bit more time consuming, but a really easy, delicious meal with that, you know, with this can of tuna that seems so boring by itself, so. And this croissant recipe in particular is actually a very simplified recipe. Like, I found like a cheater version and it cuts the time in at least half. Well, and tweaked it to kind yes. of bring out a little bit more flavor in it because yes. it was a little bland at first when you yes. first made them. So they're really good. You guys are gonna like them and try them. All right, so the dough's combining nicely. Yeah, it looks perfect. And I'm just gonna let this knead for two minutes. Not very long, just enough to get it nice and combined, nice and smooth. Okay, so this has been kneading for around two minutes. And it's nice and well combined. And then I'm just gonna transfer it to my other bowl. You don't have to transfer it. I just have something else I need to make. So. <laughs> There's always more to There's make. Always more, to make. <laughs> always more recipes to do here. These kids are always hungry. Yeah, you love it though. Yeah. I like to use my hands. And you can see it's moderately sticky, like it's not super sticky. Like it's still workable. It smells so good, the activated yeast in that just like smells delicious already. And it doesn't even have the butter in it yet. It smells so good. All right, so what's the plan with this dough? I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise for in a warm place for about an hour. Okay, so while this dough is rising, we're gonna do a couple other things. I'm gonna um, prepare the tuna. I'm gonna show you that. And then I'm also going to show you uh, how we do our fries. All right, so we'll see ya in just a minute. Okay, now we're in the kitchen because while our uh, croissant dough is rising, I'm gonna get a couple things done and get it ready uh, for supper time. So the first thing we're gonna do today is I'm gonna make some homemade potato fries. We grow potatoes in our garden and then I also have store-bought potatoes, so I have both. And uh, we just really like the homemade french fries. They're so yummy. And today, I'm gonna be using my air fryer to do it. Okay, so, well, I'm gonna chop my potatoes while I'm talking to you. So I'm gonna cut them in half. This is just, if you have never done this before, I'm sure many of you have, but just in case, I'm just gonna talk you through it. So I'm gonna have half a potato, and we like thin, crispy potatoes. So I'm gonna cut them, I'm gonna cut them like that thin, can you guys tell? Okay, we're gonna make them thin and just beautiful, so they'll be nice and crispy. Um, so, you do not have to have an air fryer to make these potatoes. Up until recently, I would do the same exact process that I'm gonna show you today, but the only thing that is different is I would take a baking sheet that was sprayed well with olive oil, and I would uh, bake these in the oven at 500 degrees, just exactly what I'm doing. You'll see all the process, and the only difference is I would bake them in the oven at 500 degrees until they were however crispy I wanted them to be. So you absolutely don't have to use the air fryer, but I'm telling you what, <laughs> I was anti-air fryer, and uh, you know Josh offered you know to get me one, and I uh, I was super anti-air fryer until we got one, and now I'm like, I made gnocchi in the air fryer. I made. Uh, homemade fries in the air fryer and everything is so much quicker and cooks so even and it's really I don't know I really like it so anyway any of you guys who have air fryers tell me what your favorite things are to make in your air fryer I was super skeptical I'm like I don't need that I've got my oven so I totally know how to do this in the oven in case I don't know in case I can't use an air fryer ever but all right, so we're gonna get these all chopped up. I'm gonna do just five large potatoes. And after I slice them, I'm gonna put them into a big bowl because later we're gonna 
toss them in olive oil. Okay, we're on our last potato. This literally takes a few minutes to chop these up. I mean, if you like thick fries, it would even take less time. Okay, so that's that. We've got our potato wedges, thin wedges in the bowl. And just before I do this, this part, I'm gonna come over to the air fryer and I'm gonna turn it on. It's a touchscreen, super easy. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit air fryer. And uh, I'm gonna make sure my temperature's at 400 degrees. And uh, eventually I'm gonna need it for like 22, 23 minutes. So I'm just gonna let, and then I'm gonna hit that play button and let it preheat, okay? So I'm, it takes just minutes to preheat, so it's no big deal. Um, and I don't, I don't know if you guys are new to the air fryer world. I'm really happy with this one. It's, it's the only one I've tried, but I really like how sturdy it feels. It doesn't feel flimsy. It's super easy to clean. I'm really happy with it so far. We'll link it below if you're interested in, in purchasing one. Okay, so we have our potatoes here. Now I'm gonna do a real generous helping of um, olive oil spray. All right, and the way that we like them is we like salt, lots of salt, because who doesn't love salt? Pepper, and then you can do whatever you want, but we like garlic powder. Nice little garlic flavor, which is just minor, mild. And then parsley, give it some pretty color. Okay. And that is it. I'm just gonna toss it with my hands. Get all that seasoning mixed around in there. All right, that's good. I'm gonna rinse off my hands. I always have a kitty helper in the kitchen checking out what I'm doing. He's my buddy. Okay, so this is ready to go. I've got my potatoes ready to go. If I were doing these in the oven on a baking sheet, sometimes I let them go like 45 minutes or an hour to get this crispy. But today I'm just gonna do like 22, 23 minutes and check them out. And all you have to do, it, you can add time while it's cooking if you want. But with the air fryer, every few minutes, it's recommended that you kind of toss it's so easy though, I'll show you. So anyway, that's it. That's so easy, our side dish is already done and we're gonna uh, toss this a couple times, uh, like stir it up, I'll show you that in a minute, but then we're gonna move on to making the tuna, the main stockpile ingredient for our dinner tonight. Okay, we are gonna work on our tuna right now. And like I said, I believe most or almost all of you probably have tuna in your stockpile. It's a great source of protein, an easy go-to thing that stays good for a long time and it doesn't take up a lot of space. And uh, like I said, all but one of my kids likes tuna. That's pretty good odds. I was already uh, talking to you guys about it. it's hard to please everybody, but this pleases most people, especially when we eat it on homemade bread. Um, it's so good. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we like our tuna and we like it just a little elevated and all these things I keep in the stockpile. So I keep mayo stocked. You can also make your own homemade, but I have plenty stocked, so I don't need to do that today. So I'm gonna put some mayo in. I, um, I put, actually I think I put five cans of tuna in this. So some of these ingredients you'll just have to do to taste, okay? And uh, my favorite tuna is the Wild Planet Skipjack tuna. And that is my favorite, but it's gotten so expensive. So I don't stock much of that. Aldi has their version of that same type of tuna in water. And that's what I have been stocking up on. All right, so I'm gonna get the mayo mixed in here. Again, this is to taste. It's, this part is just totally up to you guys. All right, while I'm mixing into, I like just a little splash of mustard to brighten the flavor. I don't tell my kids I put that in though. We don't, don't tell them. So we've got the mustard in here. 
Like I said, these are just gonna be delicious croissant sandwiches. This is, you know, I've been showing you guys super easy, super basic recipes and stockpile meals. This one is more involved but it's okay. Like when you have time, then it's no big deal to throw together some croissants and how fun, like for you to teach your kids or your grandkids, hey, look at, you can make like high end pastry at home and it's not that hard. Okay, so we've got our mustard, our mayo. Now I'm gonna add in some finely chopped red onion. It just gives it such good flavor. If you don't have this, it's okay. Okay, so we've got onions in there. We're gonna do salt. We're gonna do pepper. And I'm gonna chop up, I have fresh dill today, but in my stockpile, I also have dried dill. And uh, so that's always available. Like if I didn't have some of these things, I could still make it work even if I didn't have fresh. So I'm gonna just get some fresh dill in there. Oh, it smells so good. Again, to taste, whatever you guys like don't like dill just leave that out but we like dill <laughs> and this is it I'm gonna mix this all up together it just makes boring tuna so much more fun I know people put celery I mean you guys can have fun with this and make it depending on what you have in your house All right, our tuna is done and ready. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge while we're waiting for those croissants to get done. And then everything's gonna come together for a delicious dinner. We are back and the croissant dough looks ready to go. It's been rising for one hour yes. in a warm spot and Julianne's gonna tell us what's next. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out of the bowl. Here. And you're definitely gonna want some flour for dusting on this part. It can be a little bit messy, but it's not too bad. Oh, it smells so good. I love the smell of yeast. It just smells so nice. There we go. Here, I can take that. Thank you. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of knock out all the big air pockets, roll it around in the flour so it doesn't stick. Okay, I'm gonna roll this into know, a nice thin log. And then I'm gonna divide this into 16 different pieces. Julianne is the queen at eyeballing, which should make you all feel very good because when she kind of wings it with things, you guys are, it's gonna turn out for you, okay? And there's some grace in this. If you only get 14, it's gonna be okay, you know? Yeah, you can get anywhere between 14 and 16 and it's totally fine. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do, set these all aside. We're each gonna take a piece. All right. And then you're just gonna wanna work it into a disc with your fingers first. Then I'm gonna take my rolling pin, make sure you keep plenty of flour on it, and roll it out until it's nearly see-through. Is it okay if we add flour to this? Yes, it won't dry it out too much? Does the shape really matter too much? I try to stay relatively circular. They end up being kind of wonky circles or triangles, but it works. Now, I watched you do this the other day, and what you are doing in this step is, this is part of the process of creating the layers. Yes. Of, you know when you eat those croissants and you open them up and they look just, you can see all the beautiful swirls of layers in there? That's what this process is. So this is the part that takes a little bit of time. And I've got that one layer done. You can see it's probably like like the shape, the size of my size hand. Of my hand, which is my hand's kind of small. And really, it's like six inches by six inches. And it doesn't have to be pretty, right? I mean, in this part, no. Because we'll explain later. This part is just kind of rolling it out. So can I? Le I'm just gonna leave mine like this. Yeah, maybe a little thinner. Okay. And some pieces are bigger than others, just because I did eyeball it. What you could do, if you were really technical with it, is get your scale, measure your entire log, divide it by 16, and cut it accordingly. But I'm not going to do that. All right, this is pretty thin now. I will think yeah, it'll good. rip. Where do you want this? Here. Or do you want me to start doing the butter layers? Here, I can start the okay. butter. I'll show them that. Okay, so I'm right gonna continue right to roll. 
I have one cup of softened butter. And what I'm going to do is take maybe two teaspoons of that butter and kind of just spread it along this first layer. And then I'm gonna put this other one right on top of it and put more butter on top. And this ends up being roughly, I don't know, just under a tablespoon per layer or just over a tablespoon per layer. It depends on how much, how many other little things you get. Okay, so we are gonna continue to layer this. You're gonna see us rolling these out. You're gonna see uh, Julianne putting, so like this one is a, is a completed one. I'm gonna put that on there. Again, don't worry about how it looks right now. It's all gonna come together later, okay? So now she's gonna layer butter, dough, butter, dough, and so on. And this is what you do instead of laminating the dough, which requires a series of chilling and freezing the dough and mixing in the butter and doing that many, many times. Okay, so this is the last layer that we rolled out. And remember, she was layering uh, the, the butter and the dough. The doughs um, that has been rolled out into these little circles. And you can see, I mean, this pile is about the size of a plate, you know, a dinner plate. And notice I don't put any butter on the top and you don't put any butter before the first layer. Keep all the butter <laughs> right, you know, between the dough. Between the layers. And recap, the reason you're doing this is so you can kind of skip the step of laminating the dough yes, and which is tedious cutting in all that butter. Yes, so yeah. this is the nice, easier way. And this whole process should only take you, if you were doing it by yourself and making all these little uh, pancakes of dough, we'll call it, these little layers of dough, they sh it should only take you between 10 and 15 minutes max. So it's yeah. not that long um, for the whole process. So now, Julianne is putting this onto a plate. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap so there's no sticking incidents. Woo! It does not like me today. There we go. I'm gonna... Do you want me to put some here too? And then here. Okay. There we go. Can I have another piece? Sure. There we go. I'm gonna seal it all in here. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna pull it on top. There we go. Okay, now I'm just gonna put this monstrosity <laughs> into the freezer for about half an hour, just enough for it to firm up enough to work with. And then we're ready to actually make our croissants. It's got, a, this, this process has steps, but they're easy steps. They're pretty quick steps. We're taking our time to explain it to you guys so you can do it. But really, if you're doing it, you just kind of do it quickly and it, it's really not that big of a deal. It's pretty easy and self-explanatory once you follow all the steps. So once these are, this is fully chilled, we'll come check back in with you guys. All right, our layered dough and butter is fully chilled. It's nice and cold to the touch. All right, what do we do next? I'm going to remove all of this plastic wrap. Put down flour. And then really what I'm just gonna do is roll this until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And while she's rolling that, I am, uh, once you're all done and the croissants look like croissants and you're about to put them into the oven, you, you gotta have an egg wash on them. But we only want the yolk, correct? So I'm gonna separate an egg for Jules here. So you can see all of those little layers that we put together have become one giant slab and it makes it much easier to work with once it's chilled. So you definitely don't wanna skip the chilling process. And you want to try to keep this circular because it helps to give the croissants their very signature crescent shape. Okay, that's ready whenever you're ready. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Let's Do you have see. enough room? I think we so. have two cookie sheets with parchment ready to go. You can actually see the layers of butter. Yeah, you can see it like some of the butter layers. It's all like swirled in, that's what you want. It's what gives the very flaky layers inside of the croissant. Now I'm gonna cut this 
across. I'm just gonna use a pizza cutter. And I'm gonna cut it in thirds from there. So it's gonna have six pieces. And then I'm gonna cut each of these three, or each of these sixes into thirds. And then I'm just gonna do a little little notch right here, just to split it. I'm gonna use it and roll it. Okay. Just gently. You're not putting any force, you're just, just letting it go on its own. We need some space between them, right? They're gonna rise pretty good. This one is a little big, so I might cut this one into four. Two. I'll use this one for my experiment. Okay. If we weren't making enough, she's making apple turnovers too, but we can't fit that all in this video. <laughs> so some of, some of this dough is gonna go for apple turnovers, but sure? yes, you which, it, yes. Kind of throw these yeah. apart so it helps Wisp make it, them make them bigger, okay. Look at, and you guys can see they look just like, you know, like a croissant. Is it okay if they, if, do I need to attach them here? I try to keep them kind of on the downside just so when, like, on the underside. Okay. So when they rise, they don't okay. fall apart. You wanna hand me a couple when you're ready? Yes. One, two. And because I am experimenting, I won't get a full 20 croissants, but I did get 20 last time when I did a full batch. Right, we need some of the dough this time. Yeah. Because we have to eat the apple turnovers. This one's a little okay. thick. This one's kind of, is this okay? Thickness size? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Here. And I try to only put nine on one cookie sheet just cause they do, they blow up. A lot. Between the rising and the baking. Okay, so we have these made. Like I said, normally you, if you make this recipe, you'll get like around 20 croissants. We needed to save some dough to make some apple turnovers. So what do we do now? So we are just gonna let them be like this for half an hour. And then right before they go into the oven, we're going to egg wash them. And then they go in the oven for around 20 minutes at 395 degrees and keep them on your top shelf. Yes, the oven, right, because you don't want crisp, like too crispy of bottoms and our oven likes to make the bottom kind of too crispy. So, all right, we're almost there. <laughs> okay, they look awesome. Can you see those, Marie? Nice and crispy, delicious. All right, we're gonna pour them on here. And just for fun, I'm gonna turn this off and set that aside. We're gonna do a little bit more pepper, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of parsley for garnish. And then this side dish is good to go. They're beautiful. Okay. All right, perfect. We love these croissants because one time I was at this uh, bakery and I saw these rustic looking croissants instead of the, I don't know, the ones you see every day and they're just so beautiful. I just love them. They're farmhouse croissants. They're farmhouse croissants, that's right. And they're delicious. You can, they smell just like store-bought uh, croissants, but better because they're hot and fresh. So they're beautiful. And they're actually crunchy on the outside as opposed to just like fluffy all the way through, which I like because I'm a crust person. 
Okay, so everything is done. All we have to wait for is for these to cool just a little bit so we can slice them open and fill them up with all that good tuna goodness. <laughs> and then supper's done. So we've got our homemade croissants, our jazzed up tuna, and we have our homemade potato fries. And dinner is served with everything we had here in the house and even in, like an upscale dinner because of those yeah. croissants, right? Yeah, okay. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, Tell us some of your favorite recipes to make at home from your stockpile. And uh, we'll talk to y'all soon.